In this video, we'll be looking at how you can perform a vulnerability assessment against your AWS Lambda functions. Let's get started and let's get started now. AWS Lambda is perhaps one of the most popular compute services that people use on top of AWS. It's perhaps one of the most mature functions as a service implementation compared to most other cloud providers of its class. However, one of the big challenges that always has been there with Lambda has been that vulnerability assessment or security reviews of Lambda functions has always been a little difficult to do. Now, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at an AppSec engineer lab on how you can run your own vulnerability assessment against Lambda functions. Now, this lab, I'm going to walk you through, first of all, how you're going to set up a Lambda function, which is going to be intentionally vulnerable. And this is something that we have as part of your AppSec engineer labs. And then we're going to look at how you can perform a vulnerability assessment against this vulnerable set of Lambda functions, and you're going to be able to get results in your Amazon Inspector. So all of these things are going to be done as part of this lab. It's going to be a very action-packed and fun-filled lab. Let's get started. So let's get started with our lab. And first, to understand that I'm going to be doing these labs on AppSec Engineer. In case you don't know what AppSec Engineer is, AppSec Engineer is a platform where you can learn all of this stuff, right? Cloud security, AppSec, DevSecOps, Kubernetes security, clouds. When I'm talking about clouds, I'm looking at AWS, Azure, and GCP, as well as essential security skills like threat modeling and so on. Now, this is one of our very popular playgrounds that we released recently, which is AWS Lambda Vulnerability Assessment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this lab and basically walk you through how it works, what is happening, what is the issue, and some of the issues that you'll typically see when you're running the lab. And this is basically, we're going to deploy a whole bunch of Lambda functions and we'll see how it works. Now, I'm going to be using a Pro Plus uh, account on AppSec Engineer, which not only gives me access to this lab, but also gives me access to cloud sandboxes on Amazon, Azure, and GCP, which means that I don't ever have to carry my cloud environment or cloud credentials to be able to access this. So I'm just waiting for the lab to spin up. And once it does, I'm going to be able to access the lab and then start to deploy on a real world AWS account and then see how we can do vulnerability assessments on a set of AWS Lambda functions. So now our lab is all spun up and ready to go. I'm going to click on Access Lab, which is going to drop me into my Visual Studio Code environment on the browser, which is what we give as part of all standard AppSec engineer lab environments. And we're going to use this lab environment to deploy our function and, of course, even set up an Amazon account to begin with then deploy our functions and then start to actually perform a vulnerability assessment against those functions. But we have our IDE. I'm just going to increase the screen resolution and we have a few instructions. Now at AppSec Engineer, you all have the instructions right here for the playground to work. So you don't really need to go anywhere. I'm going to just move the instructions over to another a window so that we don't have any issues when actually we don't we're not interrupted when i have to switch screens or switch tabs when i have to run the lab so the first thing i'm going to do is set up an aws account and with appsec engineer it's very easy because if you have the cloud sandbox you get sandboxed aws accounts where you can actually go ahead and deploy it without having to carry your own aws environment so now we have our aws environment we've already configured the credentials it's all done so I can actually go ahead and log in with these credentials that have been generated. The credentials are also written to a TXT file on the root path of my machine. So let's go ahead and actually log in to AppSec Engineer, the AWS account that's been created for me as part of my Cloud Sandbox, and go ahead and then figure out how to use this. Now we have our AWS account. We're going to log into the AWS account and we're going to go ahead and start deploying stuff. So now we have a fully functional AWS account. We're going to use this account and deploy our Lambda functions and then go ahead and do a vulnerability assessment on all these Lambda functions. So let's get started with that. So most of the functions that we're going to deploy are right here, right? So you have these functions. We have some Lambda functions that we're going to deploy. So if you want to look at this, you can actually just extract these functions and see what's happening in them. 
So actually, let me do one thing. So let me go to the directory in which Lambda Inspector is in there, and then I'm going to uh, copy the node function. So node one f zip to root, and I'm going to unzip the root node one f dot zip. So we are just going to unzip that first function, and you'll see that this has some functionality it has some websites that we're scraping we're just using some so write file sync and it's a script the website so it's basically just scraping the website and it's coming back with some response so there may be some vulnerabilities here now let's look at the other function as well which is copy node to f to to root and in the root we can just go ahead here we do unzip node f zip and let's look at this function and this function has a whole bunch of it it makes a request somewhere it has some credentials and so on and so forth this is probably not the best way to access credentials from inside a lambda environment but nevertheless it has some credentials that we're accessing there may be some vulnerabilities yes I, it looks like there are some vulnerabilities that may be related to the dependencies and so on and so forth. We also have Lambda layers. We have some Lambda layers. So for those of you who want to understand how this works, Lambda layers allow you to run additional code. So let's say you have a binary that you want to run along with your Lambda function. You can use your Lambda layers and that's been zipped up as well. Now let's actually go ahead and see what is happening here. So we are setting up some lambda functions we're setting up two lambda functions we're setting up function one and we're setting up function two most of the vulnerabilities probably happen to be in the lambda layers because the layers that we're using might be running outdated code it might be running insecure versions or insecure libraries and that might be the problem so we're using lambda libraries here we're taking the we're uploading the zip file from the actual code and then we're taking the layer which we are generating from here so the layer is being generated and that layer is being used to actually inject into both functions or at least one function as far as i see so you have uh, layer two and layer one yeah so layer two is in injected into function two as a set of dependencies for function two and layer one is injected into function one as a set of dependencies for function one so that is these are the two scenarios that we have these are the two lambda functions that we have they both work as rest api which means that you need to set up api gateway resources so we have some jwt based authorization for the api gateway you will see that api for apps engineer you'll see that there are some get methods that is configured you have some jwt that is configured and you also have some other values that necessitate this as to how the token will be sent by the client side aside from that we also are setting up a aws lambda inspector which means that we are setting up an inspector function which means that into in this function is going to be subjected to uh aws lambda scanning on aws inspector which essentially means that this will be used to scan so inspector is going to be enabled here inspector is the service that performs the vulnerability scan against different aws computing environments so in this case we are setting up aws inspector to scan lambda ec2 ecr of course we're not deploying any ec2 or ecr we are essentially saying that when all these functions are getting deployed you we want you to scan these functions for security issues and we need for those to be able to access lambda functions so we're creating the necessary iam privileges and policies to be able to do this so it's, it should be able to assume role that will be allowed to access the lambda function so it will be able to actually identify and identify security issues with the lambda function identify the layers that are related to that particular function and so on so all of those things are what we're doing as part of this so it's pretty complicated as you can see there are multiple things going on we have some vulnerable layers that we're setting up we have some variables that we're using which is basically our auth0 variables we want to use auth0 as our identity provider at jwt issuing so that's basically what we're doing in this case so let's go ahead and actually deploy all of this terraform in it and of course once we're done we need to be in that particular directory which is aws inspector lambda inspector terraform in it so it's initializing all the providers and the modules that we need for this to work we're using the aws provider and the random provider that we need for this to work because we're generating some random names for resources 
that's the reason we use the random provider finally we're going to deploy all of this and this might take some time so we're going to deploy a whole bunch of things here so you'll see that a whole bunch of things 23 uh, resources are being deployed to AWS. It should be faster than EC2 because they are just Lambda functions. They're all zipped up already. So there are a bunch of Lambda functions. There are an inspector definition, which means it enables inspector on those specific things. It creates the now IAM policies and roles. It allows you to stream logs to CloudWatch. The token that you need for this to work is also there. API gateway paths, API gateway resources are created. Outside of that, you also, of course, have a bunch of other things, right? So you have the JWT auth, which is obviously what you need. The inspector is generated the functions, the layers related to those functions, they're all generated. And that is why uh, you have 23 resources that are being generated for this to work. Now, sometimes there may be a race condition and you might see a CloudWatch uh, error uh, thing uh, with the API gateway or the CloudWatch errors throwing up, but that's not really an issue because it would have deployed correctly. We've generally seen that sometimes there are a race condition where it thinks that, okay, this has not been deployed yet, but in most cases, uh, in, in literally all of the cases that we've seen, this gets deployed perfectly fine. So I'm just going to fast forward right through to the point where this is done deploying so now our stack is deployed and a whole bunch of services have been a whole bunch of resources have been deployed on the stack now let's look at what has been deployed first of all we'll see that there has been a lambda bunch of lambda functions that is definitely getting deployed obviously we're scanning lambda so we want to set up the Lambda functions to be deployed. We have some vulnerable functions that intentionally vulnerable functions, obviously, that's how these work. So you'll see that there's a vulnerable node function. There is some code, obviously, these are uploaded as a zip. So you'll see that there is some code source. You'll see that there is this. It might have, obviously, the layers and things like that. So there are some layers in here, layer two that has been added. You can see that Lambda layer two compatible runtimes and so on node 14 compatible runtimes we have added some functions here as well this function also has been deployed and this can be called through the api gateway so there's a the, you can be triggered through an api gateway so that is the function and it also this doesn't seem to have a layer some of them have layers some of them don't now if we look at the other services that have been deployed you have the api gateway and that is typically what we need for calling some of the functions that we have as a REST API. Now, all of this is deployed in the US West 2 region in Oregon, as you can see. So you have one function that you can invoke, you get a GET request, and you can call that Lambda function under the hood to be able to see this. But the real thing that we're looking at here is Inspector. Now, let's quickly go to Inspector and see vulnerabilities and whether it has started to identify vulnerabilities in our environment. So you should see that now, of course, Lambda code scanning is something that it provides. And it seems to have started identifying security issues with our Lambda functions. So, and it's given me this, let's first go ahead and see what the issue is. And we'll see that it's already started to identify critical issues. Now let's go ahead and look at the System and you'll see that a whole lot of libraries that we're using in our layers, right? Uh, in our layers is probably what the issue is. And this is the uh, layer that we have. So there's a package vulnerability, which means that the layers that we're using in this Lambda function is bad. So it has some very critical severity issues. You can see the CVEs, that some of them relate to 2023 related CVE. So you'll see the CVE information right here. You don't need to go anywhere else. So you'll actually see the CVE information right here. You'll see the inspector score, the threat analysis information, vulnerability analysis information that you'll find here. So you'll actually see the information about the vulnerabilities. You'll see which function it uh, relates to and which function it actually exists in. So clearly we are able to identify issues with the packages that we're using inside these Lambda functions. And you can even view this by Lambda function and can see that there are some ones with prototype pollution. The one, I think the minimist one has a prototype pollution by index.js. So clearly means that if you're using this particular index, this set key method in this particular, uh, for this particular library, 
your Lambda function is vulnerable, which means that somebody can potentially perform a, a remote port execution as well, which is really, really bad. Typically has a pretty high score of a 9.8, which is a pretty bad score. I would say it's a pretty critical flaw, as you would see. So as you can see, this is super easy, right? You don't really need to go anywhere. You just, as soon as you have your Lambda function, and based on the requirements manifest or the, the uh, inventory of the libraries that you have, your AWS inspector automatically starts scanning your issues, your security issues and the vulnerabilities that you have as part of it. Of course, I would still recommend that don't just rely on this, have a way to be able to do static analysis against your code. So there are two elements that you need to think about. You need to think about your libraries, which is something that this can help you do. You also need to think about how you can scan your actual code for security issues, the custom code that you write for security issues. And that's really something that you need to be doing as well. So I hope this was useful. I hope you understood how you can use AWS Inspector very easily to be able to scan Lambda functions as well. So even outside of ECR and EC2 and so on and so forth, you should be able to use AWS Inspector for scanning Lambda functions as well. So this is really cool. There's a very neat feature that AWS has come up with that makes life very easy for you to be able to get visibility into the kind of the functions you're deploying, the third-party code that you're running as part of those functions as well. So this is definitely a useful feature if you are using Lambda within your environment.